Good morning, everybody. Morning, morning, good morning. All right, man, I'm, uh, boy, I'm just trying to imagine what it'd be like if I was 20 years old right now. And how, how so much different it is today than it was when we were, we were young. And I looked at the analytics and kind of the average it gives you like the age range that you know of who watches and and so we're all like older folks you know like within my age bracket there are some younger people there's some older but the majority of everybody watching is like uh 45 to like 65 and so man what a different world we live in right now so let's pray up and ask the lord to be here and we're just trying to figure out how do we do this now like like what we had done for us back then and that's people helping us find the lord leading us to the lord encouraging us in the lord and and you know developing our faith in jesus so heavenly father thank you again for another another day here on this beautiful planet that you created too bad it's all messed up it sucks you did something so wonderful and great and beautiful and and you are so loving kind gentle peaceful everything good and we are stuck here dealing with everything that's crap and messed up that's totally the opposite of you and i'm about tired of it and it's sickening and disgusting and i'm sure everybody else is too but uh you know we we're having to endure we're having to you know uh, persevere in our faith and uh you know the book of revelations i was looking for advice and the only thing i found in there was persevere in your faith and do not take the mark of the beast so we're not having to worry about that mark thing but it's they're shoving it down our throats but uh, uh but help us lord to persevere in our faith and help us lord to share uh, the good news of who you are and uh and the message of of salvation and 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 help us do in others what what we've had others do for us. They, they led and, and guided and, and, and gave us the milk and then started giving us the meat. And so we need to be able to do that now in a totally different way. Um, and you know, than what it was previously. And we're just asking you, Father God, to show us how to do that. We pray all of those things in Jesus precious name. Amen. So, um, you know, having faith in Jesus and, I mean, what is what exactly does that mean, right? Well, the Bible uses that belief in Jesus and faith in Jesus. It's like some synonymously with even trusting Jesus. It's like three separate things, and and so us having grown up in a different time, in a different culture, in a different government, in a different society, in a different set of moral values i mean it was just automatically that we it's like it's like almost automatically we, we were i mean it was easy for us to be christians become christians but man i'm trying to imagine what's it like right now being a 20 year old or 15 year old or 30 year old or for you know any living in a world where <laughs> we don't have that infrastructure that moral foundation that was in place when we grew up. I mean, even even the non-believing people had had a moral base. Um, I mean, it, our, our, so man, all of that's been eroded. All of that's been destroyed. I mean, these kids don't know anything anymore. Even history of our country, nothing. Geography. They don't, they're going through 12 years of school and know nothing. And then they go through another four years of school, getting dead up to here and, and know even less. So, man, how are we supposed to do for them, this generation, what we had done for us when we were growing up? Man, so, I mean, so, I mean, okay, man, where do we start? I mean... I can't imagine just sitting down cold with a Bible and just 
not knowing anything about God or Jesus or, and then sitting down trying to open this Bible and start reading it to figure out how do I have faith in Jesus? How do I have trust in Jesus? How do I have, how do I believe in Jesus? We had everybody and their dog leading us to him growing up. We had every, everything. I mean, we had really, I mean, it was, it's just, a, I don't know if anybody understands that we were in a different, I mean, it's like a different time warp compared to the way it was back when, when we found out who Jesus was and we came to have a relationship with him and we came to, you know, trusting him and, and developing our own personal relationships with him. So, man, where do we, man, how do we even start, right? So, um, you know, we're doing this evangelism thing and this, I think the coffee and prayer ministry and reach, you know, outreach and is going to be, we're doing something right. And, and it's a start and, and it's a, but man, where do you, what, I mean, man, it's like, I guess the way I'm going I'm looking at it, it's like, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe Jesus was here? You know, and you don't, you don't even know what these people have heard. They, they, they know, know absolutely nothing about the Bible. So how do I teach the whole history of the Bible? I know it's like a daunting task, right? You just, we're starting from scratch, it feels like to me. And we don't even have the churches supporting. We don't want to take on anything. We, we don't want to, you know, don't rock to our boat. The, the numbers add up, we can meet our budget, we can pay our bills. And then, and you know, everybody's like on, they're trying to just sail along on autopilot. They just want to push the button and close their eyes and just let, let it go where it's going to go. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've been tempted to do that. Um, but I really, I mean, that's not who I am and that's not who God's calling me to be. And, you know, so we really, I guess where I'm going with this is like the points that I'm trying to make is that we really need God's help right now. We really need the Holy Spirit's help right now to help us to lead these people to him. How do we cram in everything that I've ever gone through in my whole life into a five minute encounter with somebody so they can know everything that I know about God and Jesus and how much you can trust him, how awesome he is and how wonderful it is. And, and, you know, if, <laughs> how do you squeeze that in, in a five minute conversation with somebody having a coffee? Um, so this is all about, this is all about Jesus saving people. No one, they pick him, but he picks them. Okay. I'm not going to save anybody. It's, it's Jesus and the Holy spirit. That's going to save people. Right. So I have to really, really in all of this, and, and I'm speaking, I'm, I'm trying to cover everybody here that already knows the Lord already has faith in the Lord already trusts the Lord already has a relationship with him. And then everybody that's still developing that and that, in that, that, you know, give and take part of the, of the relationship where you're, you're still getting to know each other. And then, you know, we've got the folks that don't know them at all. So how do I gear all of this to fit all of that? And so, um, again, I need the Holy spirit to help me. And I, I really need for the Lord, uh, to speak to somebody. Um, and, and hopefully we're, we're talking about things in a relaxed, laid back, no pressure. You don't have to conform or preform or, or you don't have to do anything except just if you're listening and you're open and, and you're, you're willing to learn something new or learn something different. I mean, that's where God's calling me right now to really take it to the next level as far as keeping my, my, an open mind. It, you know, God talks about the constant renewing of our mind. So we need to keep an open mind right now. And like I said yesterday, 
I mean, it's like just people are just waiting for you to just do one little thing to where they can, ah, and, and, you know, I think you're going to be one of those people where Jesus says, you know, get away from me. I don't, I never knew you. And, and it's going to be a rude awakening, but I don't want to be one of those people. And, uh, and from uh, everybody that's just, just tell by their heart on this channel that they're not those people either. So God's calling a lot of real Christians, at, you know, to what we're doing here and, and the other channels and the other watch women and watch men and and i haven't called myself that but i feel like that you know I, i'm just a foot soldier and i'm standing guard duty now um where before i was out in the trenches actually having a hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, combat with evil people i'm still having to deal with it um but i'm i'm not gonna anyway Man, I, I'm just, we, we got to have a new game plan, right? Tactics change. Just like, you know, any other situation, okay? You know, these are the circumstances now that we're having to deal with. So what can we do with what we've got in our hands? What can we change? How can we be flexible? What can we do differently now and still accomplish the main objective? And... I don't want pe I don't want to see people going to hell. That's the bottom line. And that's not what God intended for anybody. And I said it the other day, God does not send people to hell. They choose to go there. They do. They choose it's their decision, your decision whether or not you're going to go there. So I've thought about this strategy when I'm talking to somebody and say, well, you know what? You have a 50-50 chance of this God thing being for real and the hell thing being for real. Or or it's total make-believe and it's not exist. So you have a 50-50 chance. Who wouldn't want to take the safe bet? I mean, I hate to simplify that. You have a 50-50 chance of this God thing being real or not. But I mean, I, I've actually, I've actually said that to a couple of people. I said, well, you know, let's just keep it simple. Let's flip a coin. Heads, you go to heaven. Tails, you go to hell. Which one are you going to pick? You're going to pick heads, right? Well, you have a 50-50 chance of getting heads. But they, you know, it's, it's amazing, but they kind of like, Start thinking about that. And then I'll go into, well, you know what? I mean, there's all kinds of evidence that it's true. You know, even the archaeological record of what they're digging up still right now in Israel. All, I mean, all over the that whole area, that whole Middle Eastern area, they're still unearthing physical proof of everything mentioned in the Bible. I mean, right there in Jerusalem, right there in Jerusalem, right there in, I mean, you know, um, so we've got physical evidence. I mean, you've got historical evidence. So I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for, man, how do I build this mousetrap, Lord, to catch these guys for you? <laughs> you know? Uh, that's that's how I'm I'm I mean I hate to how do I tell these people man you don't want to go to hell you don't you don't want to be there trust me you don't want to be there you don't want to be here for the rapture either or or after the rapture you don't want to be here for the tribulation and and so that's the bottom line and so man how do we do this now this is a totally different different place than it was you know when I grew up totally different place we do not have society on our side we don't have the school system on our side. We don't have the government anymore on our side. I mean, there's lawlessness. There's, I mean, just, man. I mean, there's no common sense. I mean, uh, there's, there's no, 
there's, there's, there's not even the, they're, they're trashing our country. If you're a patriot, then, you know, you're a white supremacist. It's like, <laughs> Satan has torn everything down. He's torn it all down, tainted all of it. Anything that was ever good before is totally, and man, these poor young people, I mean, I, I grew up pledging allegiance to the flag, you know, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Man, forget that. You, they, <coughs> <coughs> Man, we're, we're starting with nothing. <laughs> we're having to continue this. This ministry stuff with nothing, no foundation anymore to go on. Nothing. Nothing. We got nothing. <laughs> so how do you how do you help God grow his kingdom and help save people when you got no nothing out there to support anything anymore like we used to have? I mean, oh my gosh, it's just horrendous. So Man, it comes down to the. It comes down to us. The churches have, like they, I, I can understand. I sympathize why they just don't want to get involved anymore. They say one thing, and everybody is like trying to sh shoot an arrow at them. I mean, I, I can, I can understand why churches are just like. God's told me he's he's called me and uh, and I I feel led that I'm not going to give up on it and I'm going to keep trying just like I always have. I mean I've always always tried to lead people to God. I mean just because man I just know how awesome and wonderful and loving and kind and gentle and and how much joy. I mean I I have felt man really felt the love of God. And, and I, I, and that just happened a few years ago. I was just like, to a point of like, God, do you really, you know, do you really love me? I, I, I just, it's like one thing after another, after another, after another, after another, another trial, another hardship, another difficult situation, another, I was like, I just want to ask him one night, just, I don't even know why. I'm <laughs> just like, do you really love me, man? And he said, absolutely. And yes. And it's like, he put his, just the tip of his finger on my heart and just melted it. So that's the feeling that I, I am so desperately wanting for God to share with other people. Because when you know that you know that you know that, no matter what's thrown at you, you're not worried about it anymore at all. You can trust him. You can let loose of it. You can let him have it. So, um, so how do we get there how do we get them there? Them being those people that are on the path, they're on the journey already as Christians that are kind of, the, those of us that are kind of like at the end of our rope, like, and want to just like, ah, get this over with, get me out of here, I'm done. And then those of us that are not quite, they're, we're new, we're, we don't know all, and then those of, of everybody that's, just now coming to him or, or, or looking at the world and going, <laughs> they're seeing evil and then going, what's the alternative to this? You know, all of everybody. So how do we, man, and there's, we have to let the Holy Spirit do his thing through us on an individual basis, on an individual basis. And, and, and so, um, man, I, I, 
we don't have to be a, you know, fortunately we're in a, in a position still where we're still free. We're, we're, you know, the brown shirts are not going to come knocking on the door to drag us out of our house. And so thank God for that. Right. And I think we're, we're out of here before we get to that point. And that's just what God has told me. Like when this whole thing started three years ago, it was like, you're going to be under a lot more supervision, but you're still going to be free. So I'm not worried about that. So that's another thing too, is us having our own security with our own relationship with God, knowing that, you know, where we stand with him and this whole thing about when the rapture is going to take place and, you know, how bad is it going to get before the rapture happens? And again, I mean, this is God dealing with Satan. This is God dealing with the Jewish people. And this is God dealing with the people that, that have refused him and, and decided to go sideways and decided to go evil, you know, the evil route. And this is about the people, the tribulation saints that, that will come to him during that very, very troubling time. This is not for the bride. This is not for the church. His people, the people that have lived and that are asleep right now, that have died. It's not for the people that are doing the best they can and, whole, and wholeheartedly have given their hearts to the Lord and given their lives to the Lord and have trusted in the Lord and who know the Lord and who, who believe in the Lord and who are doing just the best that they can. And, and so man, if, if just, if you don't really, really, really know that brothers and sisters, I'm praying right now that God really give you peace about that. I keep asking him, haven't you had enough of this evil stuff, Lord? Haven't you had enough of this world being the totally the opposite of what you created? I mean, haven't, don't you want to go ahead and move on to getting back to your original intent and plan? I mean, I'm, I'm going to, and I'm asking them just, you know, I think logical questions and legitimate questions. And, and I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> be our attorney and go to them and, well, your word, you know, you started this and this is what it was supposed to be. And, and we're even supposed to be asking for it to be as, you know, on earth as it is in heaven. And it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> Can you tell God that? Come on, dude. <laughs> Quit jacking around. <laughs> Can you tell God that? Man, I'm, I don't know, man. I'm getting sick and tired of you jacking around, Lord, and leaving us down here having to deal with this crap. I had that conversation with him this morning. I was actually a little gruff about it. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. Aren't you? <laughs> and uh, he's like, he's just shaking his head. He's like, and and I, he keeps telling me, there's still some more people out there I want to save. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. <laughs> okay. Forget what I said. Let's get back to work. <laughs> and let's go do what we are called to go do. You know? Uh, you know, go out there and be ministers and be, you know, evangelists. And this is a whole new job description for me. It's like, man, I'm, I'm just like, it, I'm starting to wear it. It's like, I have a new job. I'm a minister. I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a, I'm a evangelist. I'm a man. I'm full-time service of the Lord. I'm yeah. <laughs> and I, I've never, but I'm not. And <laughs> Not legally, I don't have a 5013C or whatever it's called, or a nonprofit, or I mean, I'm just, <laughs> you know, it's like I don't have a building. I don't. I mean, I don't have nothing. I just like <laughs> here I am trying to be a ministry. So uh, it, it's it's a um, I'm just trying to be a brother in Christ. That's it. And, um, just trying to be a good brother. That's all good brother. Really serious. Cause I never had good brothers. My, my half brothers were, 
for whatever reason, man, they, I, I ran to the Lord and chose him and my, my half brothers decided, nope, man, they are unfortunately off the, off the scale. They want nothing to do with me. Nothing. They haven't talked to me since my mom died. And that was back in 1997. And we left the funeral and I never talked to those guys ever again. They didn't want nothing to do with me. And so, um, I don't have any brothers or sisters. So, um, the ones that I have in Christ, so, you know, um, man, you, you've got to cherish that, right? I, I do. But, uh, um, and like what we're going through right now, a lot of them don't want to hear this. Man, if you, if you, if you believe in Jesus and you trust in Jesus and you are, you, you've got to follow the last book of the, I mean, it's listed everywhere else in the Bible too, what's happening, but you know, you got to believe all of it. I mean, there's seven years and another thousand years to go. And, and the last, you know, the thousand years can be like smooth sailing. Um, and, but so we you know we're close. So you, if you believe all the first part of it, you got to believe this last part, right? I mean, it's just logical. You would think, um, and, and if you've trusted him with all the rest of it and you're good with that part, then you're just going to have to trust and be good with this last part too. Right. So, all right, let's, uh, I'm trying to have like a normal Bible study today. Right. And I haven't even brought up any scriptures. Um, so witnessing these people, how am I going to approach that? Well, I, I'm just going to start a conversation. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he was here? Do you believe that he walked around? He was a man and it was God and it was his son. And, you know, he walked around and I mean, do you believe this? I mean, I'll give them real quick kind of down and dirty outline of 2000, first 3000 years. Everybody's heard of Adam and Eve, right? Everybody's heard of Noah. It was jacked up, messed up. And God said, okay, let's just kind of, let's start over. And, and then the Jewish people, let's talk about them, you know, just try to keep it as simple as we can. Right. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking, trying to find. And maybe I could sit down and, and kind of work up something, you know, trying to evangelize and how to keep it simple. And just based on assuming that they knew nothing about God and all that they've been exposed to is this world. And that's the truth. That's what we're dealing with. It's not like it was when we grew up. It's not like it was in our country. It's not, it's not like it was in any country. And, you know, um, so that's what we're trying to do is develop some, some new strategy and new tactics. And how do we lead people to Christ? How do we keep them from suffering for eternity? Um, how, how do we keep them from being drug off by Satan? How do we lead them to being saved by the Lord? Jesus. So, um, that's why, that's why God's letting this go. I really, he's letting it drag on is because he hasn't saved everybody that he wants to save yet. He hasn't. And so, like I said, I'm not going to question any of it, any of the timing, none of my business. I don't care. And I'm going to go ahead and make plans and I'm going to go ahead and faith is the hope of things unseen. Right. And, and I want to hope for all good stuff and I'm going to just continue on with what I'm doing and, and take it a day at a time and, and let the Lord do what he wants to do. And I'm totally open and, and not judgmental or, or not judging anybody and, and letting the Lord do what he wants to do. And, and, but at the same time, if these people are just flat out abusive and, and are, then we don't have any, we don't have to put up with that. We don't have to. So, but yeah, this is a community. This is a, a, a channel for us to try to grow individually in our skills and dealing with our own personal lives with you know, our own personal relationship with Jesus. And then how can we develop our, our skills to relate to and share what we know about God and about the Bible and about Christ with other people that 
are still on the journey or not quite as far along in their, in their, you know, journey in their relationship with God. And then to those of us that by the Holy Spirit feel led to talk to and spend time with and help them get on board and, and know what the truth is. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see if I think anything else written down here. I mean, real quick, um, ask the people, do you believe in God? Do you believe that there's a God? One super smart guy that just created everything. And then going from there, um, talk about that. Well, you've heard of Jesus. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you, do you believe in Jesus? Do you think Jesus really lived here two thousand years ago? It's like starting, like little kid vacation Bible school. You know what? I'm going to go find little kid vacation Bible school criteria, and that's what I'm going to use. But put it in adult. I mean, I'm, I'll can I, can I use some swearing in that? <laughs> it just you know. Make it <laughs> rated M for mature. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. Let's go find vacation Bible school for little kids and then jack it up to where it's, you know, <laughs> in today's language for adults. <laughs> Man, that's that's a brilliant idea. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna I'm going to look at that. I'm not kidding. I'm, let's do that tomorrow. We're going to do VBS, Little Kid Vacation Bible School, and we're going to, I'm going to flip it to adult version. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Have a blessed day. Seriously, God bless every one of you. Thank you for all the wonderful comments. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for hanging out with me and, and watching this and dealing with this and man i'm stoked about the coffee and prayer thing it's just a little bit too much cold out there man for me to be standing around out in cold you know all morning and uh so i'm just waiting for it to warm up just a little bit more okay and uh it's still it's still winter uh it's hanging on but it's trying to it's trying to get further there's trying to get further away from the sun it's doing it every day and uh it's gonna warm up and so, um, we'll take that a little bit of a day at a time. And, um, so in the, in, in the meantime, we're working on a home church thing. So let's get that rolling too. But, uh, anyway, God bless you guys. And, uh, I'm going to start working on, uh, what we're going to do for tomorrow. So have a blessed day. Talk to you later.